Hey there, folks, Rel here. Welcome back to another episode of whatever we're doing. Uh, hopefully the, the distal actual play. This is episode two-ish. We had a session zero a couple episodes ago, uh, and that established the, the Grim Guard, who is now gone into the Kuar Temple. I have with me Stephanie Ann from the Stephanie Ann podcast, John from Dragon Mind, and Kitty. So we're going to jump right into it. You had moments to react to an energy uh, accumulation and then a portal opening. Everybody dives into cover, rolls a stealth check as two figures emerge through the portal. One of them heavily clawed in black armor, the other more regal upright, and her eyes set upon an elven figure attempting to, to hide behind a desk, but unable to, uh, to achieve that in such a short amount of time. Uh, so Madame Gasri speaks to the, the figure in the corner and says, uh, well, well, what do we have here? So I will respond by somersaulting out into the middle of the room and standing up and kind of dusting myself off. And I say, surprise me. <laughs> Interesting. It's a bold move, Cotton. By my face palms and stays hidden. And I think Udira will stay hidden, but ready her sword for if she hears any anything dramatic happen. So the both of you stay hidden. You can see that this fury, and she's locked eyes on, on Zell because of his dramatic performance, attempts to move uh, closer, I think closer to the table that you are standing at, but kind of remaining opposite sides. Meanwhile, the armored figure begins to uh, kind of scan the room. So I would like the two who are currently hidden to roll stealth checks one more time. If my armor is noisy, I, what do I? Uh, it is a flat mm -hmm. roll instead of adding your stealth. Uh, Saime falls down and, okay. Okay. And, and just sort of sprawls all over the floor. Uh, so, all right, a little bit dramatic. Um, his whole party is very dramatic. The so as you attempt to to remain hidden, it does not elude the figure's view, and he gestures uh, over to your locations and says, uh, "Madame, there are more of them." Uh, somebody roll, or I guess investigation. It has not yet become deduction. It will in the next version. Um, and add your politics or strategy. Starting off strong. 16. Cool. I got a 21. So, uh, Zell, you can tell that this this accent and the in the armor is very, really far from the from the king's canvas and probably a part of the Lelian Empire, which is a uh, like a relatively small monarchy. It probably most often causing problems. They're they're trying to expand, but they're like over there somewhere. And because of that, they're not really Meridia's problem. So Madame Gustry is now like opposite the table from you, Zell. She looks unfazed as she kind of like gathers up notes from the, the table and kind of like she's doing light organizing. And the uh, the armored figure kind of moves in such a way that it is borderline threatening, but is centering themselves, kind of interposing between the three of you and the uh the madame she will go on to say that you are uh clearly in a space that you are not intended to be in are you here to plunder riches are you uh looking for lost knowledge she's kind of um she's asking um questions to gauge intent but it seems to be kind of offhanded neither we're here because the the wilderness has been affected and it seems to be centered here. She'll go on to uh, to say that the, what makes you think that the, uh, the surrounding region is affected by my research? And she gestures. I don't know anything about your research. I just know that the mayor of the nearby town asked us to come here because he was suspicious of this. I see. And she picks up some some papers and kind of like files them uh like into a to a neat stack 
And as she uh, goes to to place them down, she kind of like tosses them at you and then readies an attack. Who's going to roll for initiative? Okay. So, I will roll initiative. Yes. Let's have Zell uh, roll initiative. Everybody switch over to the tactical map. So this map, I'll let you know, is massive, which is not really conducive to a small scale fight. Like there will be a, a lot of places to move and you won't really need to. So all the tokens are out. Zell, you're going to be given the first go. What would you like to do? So I'm going to run around the pillar. Is that a pillar or is it a desk? So these are, um, we're going to say that these are tables just with a bunch of notes on them. Okay, so I'm going to run uh, circularly around the table. So I'm um, going to her right side and I'm going to make my two attacks with my dagger and my athame. I don't think I get... Oh, can, I can use my reaction to do a dagger twist on one of them if they hit, right? Uh, that's correct. Yep. Does a 14 hit? Yes. All right. So, and I would add my dexterity modifier to it. That's correct. To the damage. Yeah. Okay. So it's going to be 2d4 plus dex mod. Uh, so you're burning your reaction to dagger twist? Cool. Oh, wait. and just so that we all remember, you all have one willpower, which you can burn to uh, increase your chance to hit or avoid the negative effects of a spell. Okay, um, so I deal 11 backstab damage. So the the dagger misses, but it gets her to flinch enough that I can um, kind of scoop in toward uh, right underneath her floating rib with the athame. And then as it goes in, I twist at the last second to kind of try to take a chunk out. She is immediately very, very injured. She's immediately like judging all the, the possibilities and looking kind of like a scared animal. Can I threaten? Can I basically use her as a hostage to get the knight to back down? I mean, you, you can maybe try to, to roll influence and to see where okay. you, you end up, but you don't necessarily know their relationship either. I rolled a five, but I'm going to act like I rolled a 20. All right. <laughs> so, uh, madame, tree it's her turn uh, she's going to immediately disengage from you which is um 15 feet of movement that she's consuming so 5 10 15 starts heading back up to the uh the portal area and this is what's gonna happen she's going to cast lightning link on you spell attack and she's going to uh aim for a metallic uh surface nearby and then try to, to get you in the, in the blast as well. So she, Lightning Link or a Lick? Uh, link, though. Oh, I okay. Like, I like Link. That sounds much up. more appropriate to our <laughs> current situation. Uh, I did not think about that application of this spell. I thought of it in terms of like, oh, I could hit two people at the same time, like a mini AOE. But that is, that's pretty cool. So basically, yeah. you can almost guarantee your hit on one person by hitting a metal object because what it's uh oh it has eight defense right any any metal object has eight defense so that gives you like a really high prop that's pretty that's a sneaky cool spell i like it uh so eight damage lightning to use zell so would willpower do something no like... not for a spell attack oh okay it's it's is it to add to a saving throw that's right Cool. All right. Well, I take eight damage and I go. <laughs> okay. It's up to uh, either Siame or Udira. Okay. So I'll go next. Uh, seeing that she is hurt, Siame is going to say that it does not have to be this way. We came here looking for answers, not for a fight. Roll your influence. Lightning like the useful witch bolt. Thank you. She ain't dead, is she? What? She's not dead, right? Who? <laughs> She's not like an undead creature. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, because I have no influence unless I can use a bone rattle to be able to use <laughs> something else. So okay, look at that. I got a 17 straight roll. Yeah, so even though you're you're calling out, she did just get stabbed. Um, and then also she was the aggressor. She started it. Yeah, exactly. She, she started. started it. She kind of stumbles backwards and, and puts up her, her hand as if she's uh, maybe uh, calling for something, but then is is doubled over in, in pain as blood gushes out of her side. Uh, what else would you like to do with your turn? So she doesn't respond to me. Uh, she responds by bleeding all over the steps. Uh, all right. 
right. Uh, okay, so talking is a free action. Yeah. Can I say, like, we don't want you to die. We can figure this out. Uh, you can say that, sure. And I'll just sit on the 17 roll. Influence is not mind control. You don't know her intentions. And like you said, she started it. With that knowledge, what would you uh, Okay, like to well, can I look at Edvergerger yeah. and a- ask him if this is worth dying over? Uh, you can see that he is going to attempt to uh, to defend Madame Gustry. Uh, no, okay, do I get the sense that there's like no way to stop this fight? Like that we have to fight them? You So you're you're probably going to have to fight them. I mean, them attempting to kill Zell uh, immediately is probably a good indication of that. At the same time, you can if you wanted to uh, do non-lethal damage. It just can't be with a spell. Uh, all right, so I'm going to attempt to atrophy defense. So that is a... DC 12 wisdom or int check. Boo. All right. So the decision I'm stuck with here is like my only distance thing that I can do is lightning link, but I can only hit one. I can only hit him. There's nothing near him unless I have something in my pocket, like a coin that I could like throw out and have that count as a metal object. That sounds so awesome to do. Can um, I do I don't, that? I don't think the Siamé would, would probably, it doesn't seem like she'd be in that vein, but I, I will say that... Have- why wouldn't she have money? Everybody carries some money with them. So, okay. I do fair. I have any kind of metal object on me? I have... Yeah, I, I'm just saying that you're not that cool. Yeah, That's, that's what why? it comes down to. Zell is cool. <laughs> I can totally see him doing that. So I may probably not. I will say that... Why? Uh, yeah. Okay, I have a med kit. Is there something? Is there like a scalpel I can pull out or, or something metal? So is in there? the... In the floor. Why am I not that cool? <laughs> I think you're you're confusing our characters and our persons. Okay, <laughs> okay. So in the floor, there there's like metal filament that runs throughout. This Hi. is a very decorated chamber. Feel free I'm to latch onto still that. Mad that I'm not cool enough to do it my way. Well, maybe this could I be will... a redemption story, and then you could become oh. cool by the end of it. Why am I not cool? <laughs> we played one game. All right. So I will do lightning link at the floor. And I only have to get higher than... Oh, jeez. Of course. Eight. Okay. On this. Well, that's All right, good. So, so 16 damage to floor and Duncan. So I'll say right out the gate that this is so much damage. Can a chunk fly out of the floor and hit him in the head? Doesn't have to do extra damage, just for good measure. Um, no, that's not, that's illegal, unfortunately. Why? Yeah, see if you were that's cooler though. Being that's cool. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, we'll work on it. As you electrocute. That's two cool things that she wanted to do in a row. I think you're making it so that I can't be cool. I'm gonna be that that GM that's just uh, pigeonholing you into. Okay, so as you electrocute this dude, screams like vibrate out from the. Poor, poor creature. I'm feeling just very sorry for these uh, for these folks. I did started it. I could. Yeah, they started it, and I, I mean, did I everything know. I could to talk them both out of it. This dude could be an innocent bystander. No, Never. he's not. He hasn't done anything yet, is all you I'm saying. You specifically told me he looked like he was going to defend her, and she's being overly aggressive. I tried everything I could to get them to, like, just talk for 30 seconds. Yeah, don't, they are don't on fights fighting. you can't win. Well. It's yeah, the that's, lesson that's they're going to be lesson. learning. It is up to uh, Edvarig. Oh, which... uh, just really quick. Uh, so for the purposes of this is a teaching thing, if you want to leave this in or not. Um, so the atrophy defense was a technique and then the lightning link was an action. So that was like my bonus action action. Uh, they were both level ones, though. So that took two of my three spell slots. Right, because you were all uh, charged up from the, the first Yeah, round. I was all juiced up because we killed stuff. Yeah, so that's another note, too, is that uh, the ferryman would only start with one uh, spell normally if this were, like, the first fight that you're, you're going into. So. Yeah, so it's almost, as the ferryman class, you almost have a benefit of there being... Like, I was kind of hoping she would bring out a couple of squishy minions that I could kill because I get stronger the more squishy things there are to for us to take out because I don't even have to be the one to kill it. <laughs> Very man, the useful warlock. There you go. Edvarig is going to... Uh, uh, Edvarig has, like, a, a big metal mace. He is 
uh, going to raise it up in the air. And uh, Zell, you feel this like solar sort of uh, impact accumulating uh, above and then it slams um, into the, the ground nearby. Uh, does a 13 hit? Oh yes, it does. Okay, cool. So it's 1d6 solar damage, but you see that this um, there's like a, a faint aura that lines within, technically, five feet of him. He's gonna call out to uh, to Madame um, to bask in his light, which is a weird thing to say, but also he's not from around here, so. Uh, Udira. Can I use my action to continue, like to dash, yes. basically? Yep. Um, and then I will use my technique to imbue my sword with ice. Cool. Back up to uh, Madame tree uh madame is going to uh raise their their hand and you feel a thrum of uh, arcane buildup as the energy builds up from inside this place uh familiar to the sound and uh vibration that you're feeling moving through this temple and the uh the portal behind her begins to open i think she's going to take the risk but she's going to end her her turn they're right next to uh, Edverig, and she gains 1d4 healing. Four. Awesome. Don't think that'll help uh, against you murderers, but it is now back up to Zell. Um, so I am going to... Uh, all right, so circle strafe. Because there's no flanking, what, what does that do again? So since you started your turn within five feet of Edverig, you would be obscured to them. All right, with that in mind, I'm still gonna take my first stab at the madam to see what happens. Reaction to dagger twist on her. So that'd be seven damage. Bleeding profusely. She not dead yet, right? Okay, so she would have been dead, but is hanging on. All right, I'll use my second attack against her then. Okay. And I'm gonna use my willpower die because I can add to it, right? Uh, yes. Please roll a one. So that misses. It's back up to Saime. Just to remind me before Saime goes, uh, last time we ended up with two willpower die. How did we get the second one? Is it when a creature dies? That's right. Burn my last spell slot because I'm still out of range to do anything else. Uh, and lightning link both of them. Okay. By both you mean? Madam and... Yeah, Gus Gus and Duncan. He really wants you to kill me. Don't you know Zell's the big bad? How have you not figured it out in this past one episode? Okay, you do... I mean, if you really want to roll the dice, you do have willpower to burn. Wow. Well, what is your... Sorry, before you do that, um, what is your willpower die? It's an eight. It's an eight, right? So, okay. yeah, so I'd have to get a seven or an eight to hit her, at That's least, right? Because right? you said it's an 11. That's correct. But, ah! All right, well, I'm useless. All right, my turn's done. Okay. Well, I would say not useless. That was a good effort i'm my butt is puckered the entire time so <laughs> it is up to edverig's turn and um same thing again mutters some sort of incantation and okay two damage so he's going to move out of range of zell did you already burn your reaction yeah on the dagger twist okay all right so you can see this um Aura kind of following him around. He beckons for uh, Madame to follow. Udira, it is your turn. I'm going to move up to Madame and hit her. Please. Please no. I'm going to use my willpower. Uh, a total of eight plus two. Does ten hit? It does not. No, barely does not. She's hold, holding strong. Oh, is it? Uh, it's up to the Madame's turn. Portal opens at the top of this round. She... Is it hit John's turn? Oh, no? I'm sorry. It is. It is. It's Zal's turn. So an eight misses and an 18, I think, hits. It hits. It and I get backstabbed because of circle strafe, right, Michael? That, that is correct. Seven. Okay. She is. She falls to the ground, clutching her ribs, uh, blood gushing out. She attempts to crawl her way up the stairs, very much dead. So all, the, all this left is Edverg. So oh, I want to do Necrotic Lash as a reaction and hit that guy. Good call. We always forget about it. Is that something that triggers when, like, a creature dies within a certain yeah. radius? Yeah. Now, is she, she dead dead? Like, she's not? Yep. Okay. All right. Okay. 
So would have been cool. It would have been cool. So just for um, the the viewership, when a creature dies, a ferryman can like cause its soul energy that's that's leaving it to lash out in just a, a fit of of rage. And we all gain a willpower because something died. That is correct. So Edvarig looks at at the madame and they book it through the portal. The, the portal is not going to remain open for, for long. Madame opened it by uttering some words. So it seems like there is some sort of incantation to do that. But every time you've heard the energy build up, it would last for a little bit and then, then deplete. And even when you saw them walk through the portal, it was not open for very long. I say that because there is a window, depending on what you would like to do. I'm very good not going through the portal, mostly because I'm almost down. Udira would not go through the portal, but I want to go through the portal. (laughs) What are we doing if we're not going through the portal? So uh, we just had a small conversation uh, off screen talking about rules that are getting updated in the the next version and because it affects how healing works. Right now, Siame uh, has a, a healing pack and basically uh, we'll be able to, over the course of a minute, bring somebody back up a little bit past bloodied, which bloody just means you're at half health. Um, Zell's concern is that, hey, I'm dying. Why plunge headfirst into uh, this portal that who knows where we go or and what it does, uh, who's going to be on the other side. So with that being the case, to, to set the scene again, portal opens. You know that it's only open for a limited amount of time. I will say that um, if you wanted to reopen the portal, there might be ways to do that. Um, if it were to to close, you heard the incantation that um, that Madame uh, Gustry muttered. Whether or not you can repeat it is uh, something that we can talk about later. And then I'm sure there's a bunch of just information lying around that you could potentially sift through. You know that as you entered this place, she was not expecting other people to be here. So there may have been a level of carelessness involved in what she left behind. The uh, the heavily armored person, they're through the portal on the other side at this point. Their name is listed in the turn order, but you do not know that because uh, nobody asked. So. They were just like trying to kill you. And uh, as the, the portal spins up, rocks fall. The the ruins kind of shudders uh, violently for a moment. And then you feel like subsides. That being the case, what would you like to do? Did we patch me up already? Or would this be, is that something where... If you do that, um, the portal will close would be your your expected um, outcome. And then you would need to either find a way to open it or just leave the ruins. Uh, But it takes a minute to to get you patched up. I say we take the minute and then try the incantation. I could even try to perform it. (laughs) Um, Can I... We already went looking through the notes in the papers last episode, right? Yeah, and if you're... So you did that and then there was, I will say, like you're interrupted because of the the portal opening everybody scatters like cockroaches um now you probably have some more time to do more research if you'd like uh Saime is still for going through the portal but she's gonna defer it needs to be as a team so so she'll she will express her opinion but not force anyone to do anything they don't want to do so as zell bleeds out a little bit i imagine the, the portal closes. You now have a moment to uh, get Zell patched up, which um, Saime would be the best person for the, the job in this particular case. Udira begins investigating the information left behind on the table. Also, you have a corpse in the room with you, so maybe there's some information uh, there. I don't know. Go to- I'll uh, loot the body. Okay, <laughs> you loot the body. So as you're kind of like looking over this, uh, lifeless fury there are like uh notes written on her arm just below the sleeve and it is a it is an incantation that seems very similar to what she had stated this is like notes for a college class 
might tell you a little bit about her reliability or or her background but uh there's also like other notes on another arm too which they say things but you'd have to to do some uh mage work to, to figure it out aside from that she doesn't carry much uh on her person there's some like vanity items we do have mage work and arcana if i can try and decipher that while um thyme is healing up zell yeah so why don't you roll uh your mage work plus arcana yeah. Um, one of them is a, so there's two lines. One of them is a simple cantrip, uh, f for heat cloak, basically, uh, which is a, just a simple utility spell that allows you to stay warm in the cold. The other, um, you, you don't, you don't get a sense of, uh, of what it is. I would let them know that maybe the portal goes to somewhere cold because of this cantrip she has written on her arm, but that we possibly have the incantation to open it again. I can cast Heat Cloak. Is that only on me? I'm pretty sure you can put that on somebody that you can touch. But I can only have one going at a time, right? That's right, yep. I'm gonna put it on me. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you were to look, spend some time like looking through the books, there's very specific um, information about this particular region. Uh, and then also books kind of like about um, un, like undying spirit energy kind of in general. And there's like some, uh, I guess, speculation surrounding how to harness the, the energy of like undead spirits for greater means. And putting that together, you kind of figure like that was probably the, the thesis that she was operating on when attempting to create a portal here. Aside from that, um, just to kind of review what we found last time, there was some communication that was to her. Definitely seemed like some some language barrier uh, stuff. It's like written just a little bit weird. They're asking like when the portal is going to be done, um, how many people they can move across, like the frequency at which they can do that, um, and, and that sort of thing. There's some brief talk about pay, but no specifics. All right, so are you opening the portal? You do not, yeah. you do not need to. I want to stress that you can go either direction. No, now that I'm now that I, I'm not on death's door, I'm cool. Okay. Is there anything that you want to do with the body? And I'm asking a lot of questions. I'm just trying to figure out what's, how things uh, lay. Uh, while they're going through stuff, Siamé will uh, prepare the body for its trip to whatever comes next. Okay. That's like her thing. Cool. She, so you, she respects the dead, no matter how they got there. Who is going to open the portal? I can try, because I saw the incantation written on her arm, but if anyone else also wants to try, that's fine. Would this I have, be like an obscure oh. thing? You can use whoever has the highest arcana, and I'll give you... Actually, all three of you are kind of spellcasters, aren't you? Uh, all three of you can roll mage work and then add... Uh, Arcana. Can I add Obscura? I will say for this particular construct, no. However, Ew. let's just add whoever has the highest Arcana because you all have the incantation. All the notes are there. Wait, so are we all rolling or is you're the highest? Gonna, you're all going to roll. Um, just to make sure, I want to give you every chance possible to make sure you can open this portal without actually letting you open the portal. Does everybody feel good about what they rolled? Yeah. Cool. I don't like that question. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, so you you all kind of spend uh, time. <gasps> Do we hold time. hands and say it all together? You cast the, the incantation and uh, use the brief Zell, moment. Zell, hold my hand. <laughs> the brief moment to grow just a little bit closer as a, as a group. Zell's in the middle, obviously. <laughs> and then the two on the outside. Okay, portal opens. Energy spins up. You feel the, the walls of this uh, ruins shudder, and you are ready to step through. Udira, you take your first steps onto creaky floorboards. The temperature here hits you. It's a brisk cold, but you are Ol's daughter and are wholly unaffected by uh, temperature extremes. However, 
This is not an extreme temperature. This is just win winter, it seems like. You find yourself inside of what looks to be a mostly destroyed, dilapidated chapel. Light filters through the windows and snowflakes filter through the boards above. You exit through a portal that is of the same make as the one that you went through. This seems like it was an area at some point, and very similar to the place that you just came from, uh, an area of hopefully resting dead. This chapel has long been abandoned. There are like chairs and desks and vanity um, items that are kind of concealed in a, a warm little bubble on the other side of the room, writing utensils, implements, and that sort of thing. The door to this chapel, uh, wind enters and kind of blows some of the the, uh, the snow inside, and you are alone. There's nobody here, but you can tell that the fury had been going back and forth, uh, either to continue preparations or ensure that her creation worked. It's hard to tell which was the first portal. That being said, um, you are on the other side of this portal. There's no sign of the the heavy armored figure that was here. What would you like to do? Are there tracks? So you uh, walk outside and you you look around, and there are very clear horse tracks in the snow. And they kind of lead off into into a forest that is dense. It looked like it took a journey to get here. Looking around, there's three sets of these tracks. They probably weren't here for that long. There aren't like spots where the horses would be set up, you know, or stabled, or um, you don't see any like spots where do horses lay down? I think they lay down. Um, you don't see any spots in the snow that would have been uh, carved out. You just see hoof prints leading away. No boot prints? Um, I'll say the boot, boot prints, yes, um, to just outside and then gets on a horse, leaves. But uh, a few horses. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to do while you're here? Actually, what is even the, um, I guess, the intention of your stay at this point? You know that some people were here. Uh, don't really know their motivations necessarily, just that they were intent on making sure this portal was set up. Uh, based on the, the correspondence that you saw over the other place. Do we recognize the landscape at all? Like, is this another country or would this be another plane? So it seems very much in the distal plane. You don't see anything that would kind of like, oh, that's way more strange than it should be. You you do not recognize the, the terrain around you, but you have this feeling on the inside of your body that you've moved quite some distance. And that may be just because of however the portal treats um, the people who pass through it. But you have a sense, some sort of like innate sense that you are very far from home. Is there any wildlife around that we can, like are we hearing birds or is seeing no. squirrels or anything? No. Um, no. Nothing alive? No, and it is strange that you see nothing, hear nothing, and also reminiscent of how it was in the other place. Now you mentioned from a politics check that we did earlier that that the armor worn by the person escorting Madam G, that uh, there there that was from like an upstart imperial uh, country, right? Would this would this terrain suggest that it's consistent with where that empire is geographically? <clears throat> I would say yes. Well, Zell has a theory, because I'm the Velma of the group. Um, they're, they're setting up portals so that they can uh, easily move um, siege troops into areas in order to blitzkrieg other nations and take them over quite easily. And that may certainly be the case. And with that knowledge, um, what, what do you feel that the Grim Guard would do in this particular situation? And just to kind of set the stage for for everybody back at home. Um, this is not intended to be a heroic fantasy like D&D. &D. Like there are repercussions and we are kind of like leaning to the side of, uh, yeah, your, your characters are competent adventurers. They also have their own motivations for 
the things that they are trying to achieve as an organization, the things that they're trying to achieve as individuals. And uh, if you saw from the last fight, you know, death is a possibility. Can we test and make sure we can open this portal again from the other side with the same incantation? Sure. You hold hands. You attempt to open the, the portal and it does not. You know you're doing things right. At least you think you're doing things right. It does not open. Did she have anything else on her arms? Did she we, did. Did we check both arms? She had, <laughs> right. She had two lines on the other arm, one of which could not be deciphered, and one of which was also not spoken. All right, that so we're back here. Seems like it. Yeah, because see, that, that changes the decisions. If we know we can dive back home at any point, that is a very different situation than being like, well, this place doesn't matter anymore. We need to... Yeah, like there's no there's no choice. Our backs are th- th- we burn the ships. Uh, so yeah, we follow the I would say follow the horses. Onward. How many horses? Three. Three. So theoretically, one additional person, because we would assume one of those horses was for the lady we killed. Does uh, it look like one's being led? Can we even tell that? Probably not. Uh, so for for that specific information. Can somebody roll? Uh, let's do deduction plus uh, survival or beasts in this case. And deduction is investigation? Uh, yes, sorry. I would have a plus five for a dirty 20. Very nice. The horses are in formation. They are not being led. They are not even being guarded. Now you saw that the, uh, the heavy armored figure made it a point to kind of guard uh, the madam. Failed miserably, obviously, uh, due to how this game works. But the uh, the people who rode up, it's more like they were a military formation. So the madam might have just been working out of this place. And you can see like vanity items and stuff. Like there's, there's homey odds and ends here, even though it's probably not a great place to stay. Okay, any... Uh... A quick rifling through of her personal belongings. Lots of perfume. Is there anything of interest? Perfume. Lots of perfume. To go back to what you were asking about the Grim Guard and what we'd be doing and our motivations, we had tenets set up that I am forgetting. W- what were they? <laughs> so one of them was uh, you don't leave anybody behind. The other is, well, depending on if you were going with some of the things that um, were suggested. It's that you don't let anybody stand in your way. Um, I think that one was only half joking. Uh, you're definitely called in when others can't accomplish the tasks. You know, um, you defy the odds, uh, which is in line with you know them sending an adventuring party and needing some some expert support. Yeah, so I wouldn't be wanting to necessarily follow up on this out of any altruistic intention, but I do have a reputation to uphold and I'm not going to leave a job half done because I'm a professional. Yeah, you also know that she was probably, based on the correspondence, she was either awaiting pay or that the people who were sent out here were making sure that she got the work done. Is there any indication that she was a prisoner? No. I say follow horses. So as you set off into the unknown, you are on foot. You would travel for quite some time following these these tracks. Eventually, it's going to get to the point, just based on the snowfall, where you probably lose them. At least a single night passes where you are looking to make camp. What time was it when we started? Uh, Like midday. Okay, so we're far away from this shelter. Yeah. Like there's no backtracking to stay in this thing overnight. We we're we've got right. too far. Yeah, yeah. Like you you're going into the wilderness and you, you keep moving and uh, heading toward hopefully towards civilization in some respect. And there's nothing. There's no other shelters or even abandoned buildings or anything. Uh, not that you've seen along the way. Very dense forest up until this point. Like it took no time. animals. You know, and no animals to start. Eventually, the animals start coming back. Um, rather, you move far enough away from what would be the disturbance in that area 
to where you can start hearing birds, start seeing, um, you know, the odd rodent, the vermin, jumping through the trees. Is it probable that the animals in the place that we got hired from fled just because of the portal's ambient energy? Absolutely. I just want to know if we're hungry. So as you settle down for the, the night, we're going to find you all a reprieve of some sort. How do, how do you create that peace from a, a weary day? You know that there's going to be more travel to be had. Sayame says that she'll hunt for breakfast in the morning. Um, I have a pretty high survival, so I think I would build a good shelter, um, laying down branches and anything bushy I can to lift us off the ground to keep it a little warmer. Um, and I can create a fire by just imbuing my weapon, catching, catching fire to something. So we're at least warm and have shelter, maybe. Do we have rations on us? Uh, yeah, well, actually. We gave them to the bear. We gave them to the bear. I totally forgot about that. I was wondering what you're angling at. Um, it's unusual to be that interested in whether or not you can eat. I'm, I'm sure you can do some, some hunting now that there are animals. Well, so if Udira is setting up shelter, um, I have a plus one to survival. Would it be a roll to, to forage? No, this is more of like a, we're, we'll call this a narrative moment where what I would like to know is just how, how you're, you're kind of banding together in this, this group to create camp, to find shelter and just have safety knowing that you have more travel left to go in the days to come. Taking time to reminisce uh, or to, to analyze or to study, that all qualifies. This is more of a, a moment to, to just like meditate on the past day than it is to mechanically survive. Because that I assume you can do. You're all adventurers. Life is only hard if you are fighting things, you know, or causing problems. Okay, can I let the other two know what I know about the empire that whose name I forgot as John, but Zell would know? Yeah, so the, uh, that Lelian empire. Yeah, do uh, I know, or does Zell know who the, like, the empire emperor is? I'll say no. You know what the religion is, though? They are an offshoot of... So, like, Wencian religion is, like, just the human sort of religion. Uh, there's many gods in that particular pantheon. But this... This is, like, a... It's Ceresian. They place more emphasis on Sarasil, who is the goddess of omens, than they do on uh, Wentz. Wait, have you, have you told us why this information matters yet? It doesn't even need to matter beyond just the context of of what you're walking into and the place that you you know. Oh, the Wentzian religion is uh, so Wentz is the the god of fortune or misfortune, and um, and Saracil is the the goddess of, of omens. There's a bunch of gods in that pantheon, and they're the Wentzian religions. Like I'm sure there's a bunch of off, offshoots of it, but it's more intended to kind of like give you a little bit of insight into how they view the world. So a little bit of a calmer place to to end this particular session. But I think as we uh, look to the days of travel to, to follow, that's where we'll pick it up. Thank you very much for hanging out and um, watching this party brutally murder what is very obviously an innocent bystander. Um, and we'll see uh, what else they decide to do and who they decide to, to brutalize uh, needlessly on the next episode. Thank you very much, folks. You're all signing off. It's not innocent! <laughs> <laughs>